just going to say this right now at the top of the episode. Um, I apologize for the weird audio stuff. Um, I tried some new things, and it didn't quite pan out. Um, So between losing the first iteration of this episode and the audio being very weird on this second iteration of it, I just um, decided to chunk it up as a loss and just post it anyways and just say my apologies now. But without further ado, here's the episode. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Ian. Uh, This is usually the aftermath, but we're doing another little uh, off-the-cuff podcast, a little something different. Um, This is actually the second time that I tried to record this because we had uh, program issues trying to export the audio. Oh, what fun it is. Uh, But anyways, I digress. Uh, I am with my brother, the one and only... Ethan, how are you today? Doing great. Doing great. Yeah? I am. Um, how does it feel to have... Uh, round two? Round two for this podcast, because <laughs> we, we filmed, oh man, we filmed a whole 48, 50-minute long podcast. Yeah. It was a good, full of all the yuck-em-ups, <laughs> and, and it, uh, it's gone, gone to history now. Yeah, I am. Um, Where all the good, all the good stuff goes in the digital world. It was kind of... I was a little bit, um, it's pretty, it's pretty fun. It's kind of sad to, <laughs> to see it go. Like, yes. oh, okay, there it goes. There it goes. Well, I mean, in, in our defense, we lost my audio. So oh, we have yeah. a perfect, perfect full length podcast of just oh. Ethan's audio. So <laughs> with some ghost in the background. Yes. Yeah. With something. me just whispering sweet nothings in his ear. Yeah, like I, I may be a little bit crazy. It seems like I may be crazy anyway, but, but to, uh, Um, to make good on what happened last night and the fact that we don't have a podcast, um, we, we, we got, we got some stuff, Sean got me some stuff, uh, as a, as a little, uh, little, little something to spice up this episode. He got a new, uh, Red Bull and it's a watermelon flavor. And I thought that I would, uh, but I wish it was a sponsor. Thought I'd give it a, a nice little test. And see if it's uh see if it's any good. Yeah, it's my. You ready for some? Perfect. Ready for some nice foley work? Oh yeah. Oh here you go. I heard that through the the mic. I heard that. I also watched it peak the levels on the thing. I'm gonna do it again. Yeah, that was, I think that was pretty loud. Oh man, does it just make you? Mm, here we go. It's my first sip. Let's go ahead and do it. It tastes like candy. Yeah, that's good. It's really, it's really that's sweet. really good. Wow. I had to go silent just for that to get that moment of silence. It's, yeah. it's really good. I had to really um, uh, be silent for the, what was it called? Maybe you're, you're silent for um, dramatic effect. Oh, that's oh, what I'm pause thinking for of. dramatic effect. Yeah. Pause for dramatic effect. Mm. Yeah. Man, that's really good. Yeah, right? It's, you can't, it's like, it's like eating watermelon sour patch kids except you're drinking it. And also it increases your heart rate significantly <laughs> yeah okay yeah. so let me go ahead and pull up some of the stuff that i wanted to talk about we definitely um try to remember what we covered the other day <laughs> yes yeah. uh, there's a lot we talked about man yeah, yeah. i feel like it's all gone but let's not harp on it for too long at, so, at some point we did uh get distracted and talk about the current um state of events that's going on so yes i guess we'll, we'll touch on that again because we didn't have a chance to yeah. uh just a little um refresher in case you missed the last episode usually i am joined with uh, a really good friend of ours dylan and he and i um have this show where we um watch a movie or a tv show or stuff and then of course we like have a little conversation about it and stuff but because of this recent events that are going on which is the coronavirus covid19 etc etc it's early april just to let you guys know and that means that it is um they extended the quarantine until the later part of this month i think the 30th yeah they they, uh, extended it by an extra month just two weeks ago so of course still very new and dylan lives with his family and lives with people that uh don't feel safe with him leaving the house very much which i don't blame them yeah. but it's still kind of a bummer because i want to have our podcast and i want to do our thing but yeah. um and as, you know as it stands 
for all of our friends, right? Like, I, w- I was making the joke, and I invited people over and just say, quarantine party, like, everybody come to my place, we're going to We were responsible, though, please. And, like, we were having all sorts of fun. But then the, um, <laughs> the kind of issue is that the quarantine parties quickly kind of uh, died off as everyone realized that of all the houses to go for a quarantine party i work on an ambulance and i'm the likely person that you don't want to go to this house yeah <laughs> so of all the people like, you want to hang out with we're not the ones idea. No, you guys are right so um it's kind of been of all the people to come and hang out and do the podcast with with me being here it's kind of like probably not a good idea yeah sounds about right but with that of course uh he's uh He's been also quarantined in his house. We've been keeping up over Discord and whatnot, but uh, we're all kind of driven a little stir crazy. We're all doing pretty good, but it has been. We're on what week two, three, something like that. It feels like an eternity. It feels like eternity, maybe. Schools I don't know. Are stopped. Everything. Everything is different. It's all weird, but again, we won't. I mean, I still work, I suppose. But... Yeah, we are both lucky enough that we are in um, fields of work where. We still have jobs, technically, so I'm very grateful for that, and I think that that is really awesome. Um, but, of course, it does. It doesn't always work out, because it makes you feel really nervous, because, again, yeah. we're dealing with people a lot of times. Um, yeah, so. it is kind of weird, because, yeah, it's like, I'm happy I still have a job, but I'm also like, ah, but every time I, like, I'm, like, going to people's houses and, like, getting coughed on by people, I'm like, yeah, and you're like, right. this is not like, fun. It's kind of, <clears throat> it's not fun. As nice as it is to still have my job and still be, you know, kind of doing everything. Like, not much really changed in my life, except for, like, I can't go out to a restaurant or something. Um, like, it, it is still kind of, like, annoying, kind of weird. Like, I don't really, like, I wish I didn't have to go to work kind of yeah. thing. Like, oh, man, there's people are I crazy. will, I will say that um, because of the type of work that I, I do, so I, I worked at a coffee shop and right now that was like my main job and I'm currently not working there right now because of this whole situation that's going on, obviously. Um, but I also work with a church. Excuse me. And um, I do a lot of like the production stuff. I do uh, a lot of their like live streaming stuff and uh, video, you know, all that kind of nonsense. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Um, but what happened recently which i'm not sure how much i'm willing to divulge on all of it but there was um and there was an arson is it is it called an attack an arson attack no i think it's just called arson it's just someone tried to burn down the church (laughs) and and (laughs) just (laughs) i mean that's just the way it was big facts um yeah so we had like a main office building that was like uh like burnt up a lot of stuff was lost the actual like sanctuary and stuff is all good and everything's all okay but that happened like this past week and like so my week has been filled with conference calls and emails and is the video equipment okay mm-hmm. what equipment's okay what do we have what do we not have and it's just how much been, money did everything cost it, again <laughs> yes exactly right. does insurance yeah. cover that or that yeah, or right. you know so it's just uh you know it's been stressful but it's also been in all this, of course, it's really a chance also to see, like, the community comes out and really um, helps out and puts, like, you know, is a, puts their own stuff aside a lot of times and, like, really tries to help all of us out and stuff. It's just, it's really crazy and really cool. And I know everyone has differing beliefs and stuff, but at the end of the day, like, you know, the yeah. person in question, I think, has been apprehended. And, of course, the community now around us is, like, regardless of their belief or where they come from, they're all standing up and just being really good people and trying to help us out. And that's, like, it's just really cool. It's just, you know, it's also everyone's stir crazy being inside in quarantine. And I'm like, like, I'll help out as long as I can get out my face mask. As long as I can have a face mask, stay six feet away, I'll help whatever way I can. Yeah, and that's, like, that's kind of the same thing where, like, it feels weird. I mean, me and one of my coworkers were talking the other day. I had, like some downtime and at the service i work at downtime isn't um a, a phrase that exists oh you mean as a medical professional you have downtime yeah right, yeah, right. <laughs> like, everyone else has downtime unheard of right? yeah yeah and in, in the service i work trick for, question I'm, I'm i'm an emt em emt and i work for a municipal ems service uh I'm, I'm going to school to become a paramedic and um the service i work for is extremely high volume and 
as you would have, as you would imagine. As, as, yeah, right. And some some of them aren't as bad, but it's very high volume. And the thing is that lately, because of this, people don't want to call nine one one because they're like, oh yeah, those medics more than likely they've got something. So they're like, not people are going out. There's not as much going on. So our volume's really low. We were talking. You know, my partner were talking about it. Like, for how bad this virus really is, it's. I mean, like. In my personal life, it's been pretty all right. The call volume went down. People are bringing us, like, food. People are being nice to paramedics again. That's that's not something that always happens. Like, my commute to work had less traffic. Like, in yeah. a weird way, it's like, God, this isn't so bad. Like, but at the same time, we all know, like, yeah, this is also not good. <laughs> right? Like, it's... Yeah. It's, 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 it's always good to try and find, like, the, you know, right. the, the greener side of the pasture and all that kind of yeah. stuff. It's, you know... Because it's very, very easy to just get so bummed out and get so just, you know, focused on some just really awful but, things right now. Yeah. But at the same time, it's also... There's not really anything good going on right now. It seems like everyone's like, oh, no, another dangerous thing is happening. Yeah, more quarantine. Yeah, more qu- Was <laughs> yeah. that another month? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's also what happened. But when it's I also like... notification, it... we had another month. I heard my partner from the other room. Like, Go. I got the notification. Oh. I, looked, I, looked, yeah. I looked at the thing, and I was like, no, oh, well, the governor extended to a month. And from, the, <laughs> from the other room, I hear, ah! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, that oh, oh. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm guessing you have the notification I got. <laughs> yeah. But as I had said also on the last podcast as well, when it was just me, I had talked about, um, you know, there's moments like this where it's really good to um, focus on the things that you do have and that you can be grateful for because it's so easy to take for granted, like mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff you have mm-hmm. and a lot of the opportunities you have as well. So it's just, I'm not saying that everyone has that, but even though you may have lost a lot through all this stuff, there's always something that you can look at and yeah. be grateful for. And I think as like a, as a, a general, um, mm-hmm. like general rule, just don't be a dick and wash <laughs> your hands. And it's just <laughs> case in point. There's a big tip for, um, yeah, yeah. But no, like I would say like, I think like the, the consensus of like what everybody, this is something that we touched on before, um, kind of sad that again this isn't the other episode but like we as a general like consensus between everybody is that whenever this this uh quarantine's all over everybody wants to go to a restaurant and eat yes if there's one thing that can unify all of us as a people is that once the quarantine's lifted everyone wants to just go sit down at a restaurant and eat something like that may just be a southern thing i I don't know go to a mexican restaurant and get me some chips (laughs) yeah anything just something yeah Oh yeah, I like I and I think I had mentioned this as well. Was uh, I mentioned this to you? Was um, I was on the phone with somebody yesterday, and her and I were talking, and uh, that was brought up. Was like, what was the fir- what is the first thing I do whenever the quarantine is lifted? And it was uh, f- for the both of us actually. It was uh, we we're gonna go to a restaurant and eat something, and uh, uh, go go see a movie. And I was like, right. so you want to just go on like an old fashioned date, dinner, and a movie? And I was like, yep, that's just pretty much that's just the way it is. And I was like, I mean. You got it. I'll, yeah. I'll call you back in a month. Yeah, I'll, call people, right? <laughs> I'll call you in a month. I have people, I have people call your people. And yeah. Maybe this person's number like, hey, Ethan, get a hold of them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. The problem is, yeah, it's going to be um, extended for a month, so it's kind of like I don't figure know. out what. Okay, what so I also. do for this month? <laughs> I have a talking topic that I had wrote down here um, mm-hmm. that I, I want your opinion on, and I want to also. I don't think we've ever talked about this. We may have. We're brothers. We've probably talked about this at some point. But one thing I really... One thing I really love... I had realized this because I had stumbled across somebody on YouTube. Mm. Is I love, like, beautiful women that can play drums well. I have noticed, like, that's just my thing, I've noticed. It was like I had stumbled across a person on YouTube, Mm -hmm. and not only was she... Is she beautiful? But also, it was like, Shred that double oh my over. gosh, yeah. was just killing it on drums, and I was like, if anybody you can have, drums, you instantly get like, an you can have whatever you want. Right. <laughs> I, like I, <laughs> I, I will, it just one of those things where I was like, I will, it just I'll move mountains for you. Trust mm-hmm. me. Yeah, but yeah, I I love I love drums. I really do. I love drums and percussion. I've, I've yeah. participated in that kind of stuff for a long time. I don't know if it's I, just because of I don't know. I uh, 
So anybody who plays drums instantly is like, oh yeah, I could probably hang with you. Like, it's yeah, we're gonna be on, we're gonna be pretty cool. <laughs> like drums are exclusively why I got into metal, and like I listen to all kinds of music, but my favorite music is metal, just because I'm like a drummer. Like it's just yeah. But so. one thing, and especially like again because of us as well, is like being a bass player, being mm-hmm. a drummer, like and having that kind of relationship. I always and just I always strive to look for again. And I don't really discriminate male, female, and different. Yeah. Is it, if you can play drums well, we're going to be cool. That's right. just yeah. the way yeah, it is. Pretty much that's just the way it is. Um, I, don't, I don't care what you're doing. But, but I've, just, I've noticed... The color is, but if you play drums, then we're cool. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Exactly. Everything else is null. You can. But that was the one thing I realized when I, had, when I was watching these videos. I was like, I... Hmm. You here's my whole heart. You can have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I found something I'm attracted to. Yes, Dang it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I was going to ask you: Is there anything like that that you've noticed in your? I think we've been over this one before, for me at least. Yes, yeah, I think I don't have a problem. Red, yes, yeah, red, red, red. Irish in my blood. <laughs> don't know what it is. It's, I think it's, it's our good old Irish, Irish heritage. There's, there's like a there's a lot of Irish. If you like for our last name and for our family heritage, there's a lot of Irish in our uh, family heritage. And, yeah. Um, I think that's what it is. I have a yeah. pro redheads. I'm like any redhead that's like walks by, I'm like, oh yeah, ten out of ten. Yeah, yeah you're it like, yeah. It really doesn't matter. Like, I, find, I don't know why I find that hair color so attractive, but that's me. I don't know. Is there any like character traits, anything like that that just kind of really? I mean, for character traits, there's like a, like a million that I'm attracted to. Right? Yeah. But like, that, like that, that the physical trait, redhead. The rest of it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. If you're a drummer and a redhead, yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> drummer, redhead, sold, right? So <laughs> <I'm> down. <laughs> But, I mean, I think for me, something that I've kind of, I kind of realized um, is, like, I, I can't, it's not, I can't be with someone that's not, like, willing to travel a lot, because that's what I'm going to be doing with, like, my life. Like, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. At, like, whether I decide to take medical training somewhere else and travel as a paramedic or what have you, or if I just want to travel, like, I can't have someone who wants to sit still. They've got to be chill, and they've got to be willing to travel. And, like, every every other trait about you, honestly, like, doesn't matter. If we mesh well, and you're, like, and you're, like, spontaneous, like, hey, want to want to fly to Washington and I'm like heck yeah if you if you if you've got that nothing else matters <laughs> that's that's what it is there you because I just I love I love exploring the world and traveling and that's crazy looking forward to doing some more in the future you know going to different places so is there anything Once you want to quarantine's lifted <laughs> oh my gosh don't even don't even bring it up so is there anything you want to talk about anything um, to bring up no to bring up I mean kind of depends it's been and I've been kind of having like a weird time where like I because everything was going on I'm like just studying and stuff and like playing some games and not really like getting out and doing much and like I kind of realized that I like I really love my I love my me time but um I really need to like get out social interactions will be nice too not much interesting has really happened because like I haven't been out with the boys I haven't like I haven't yeah um like done anything interesting feeling right like except for again work which has been interesting in its own right working in the midst of something as yes unprecedented as what's going on right now well I think I had told you basically like before this whole arson thing happened oh yeah like I had had I made sure that I was like on top of my work where I was like ahead of the schedule basically. And like I had this past Monday and Tuesday off where I just didn't, I didn't have anything to do until yeah. Wednesday because I just was on top of everything. And I was like, this is perfect. And then I really took those days for my own and like really just didn't do a whole lot. I just had those days where, like, I kind of played some video games, like you said. I kind of was just laying around the house a little bit, right. watch some yeah. shows. Play some music. It music. just, yeah, play music, <laughs> anything. And then, like, it was at that, like, that was at that second day. I was like, it's only been two days. <laughs> and I just felt, like, I just felt so lousy. I just right. felt so wow. awful. Look at that. I've been doing literally just nothing for, for 48 days. hours. It's kind of awful, honestly. Dude, I just felt like, I, I felt like. I felt awful. And I was like, I, the second Wednesday came around, it's like, I just need to do something. I just well, started, like, right. doing anything. Right. So. I, um, that's the way, like, I feel like, by no means do I have a car that's, like, really nice. Like, I paid $800 yeah. for my car, and it somehow still drives, you know. But, like, I, 
after just a couple of days of like sitting around and with the, the turning of the weather and pollen and all that, uh, my car was like covered in cobwebs. And like I was, I went to go get my car fixed because naturally, when you pay eight hundred dollars for a car, everything's broken. I had to get calipers and brakes replaced. I had to replace not one, not two, but four headlights because uh, I only have one working apparently. Don't ask. I uh, like I can do computers. I'm not. I'm not in with the whole car thing, so I had managed to have only one headlight working. <clears throat> Rather impressive. So we had to um, change a bunch of stuff, and like my dad, who, or I should say our dad, who works on cars a lot, it was like, when's the last time you washed your car? And I was like, it's been mm-hmm. a couple months ago, like it wasn't that long. Like, Once upon a blue moon. Yeah, no, yeah, it was like maybe last month I washed it, but the problem is sitting out and not being able to do anything for like four days at a time managed to get it covered in cobwebs that I could peel them off it was comical like I um I don't know it's kind of like uh I don't think I've ever asked you this question and I think it'd be a good question to ask okay um we about to get deep I don't know about deep but I know that you're getting deep and you you're almost finished and you've almost become a paramedic it's been what year two years uh if you if you start from emt then whenever i 2018 end of 2018 i finished my emt and then i started paramedic school uh toward the end of 2019 yeah if you start from emt then i've been doing this whole on the ambulance career thing for about a year and a half um, if we start from paramedic school, then it's almost been a year. What is something that you wish you would have known going into this that you know now that you didn't, like when you first started, coming back from China and Nepal and whatnot? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, co- I guess coming back from, <clears throat> I mean, that's... Uh, he Again, this is a couple years ago. He, he did yeah, some... Yeah, like, I think as of right now, we're in March. So like two years ago today, I was living in China for a few months. Um, yeah. And I think, well, I, I think one thing I wish I would have known going in to like, because I did, a lot of people get culture shock. A lot of my friends that came with me because I had a group of people. Uh, yeah. That went with us. I, a lot of us. I told them about how I lived in Canada for a while and I had the same sort of thing. It yeah. was like, even though it was like just American enough to feel normal, mm-hmm. it was still just weird enough. I was like, this yeah. is a weird a culture. A lot of my friends experienced culture shock when we got there, mainly because I couldn't read Jack Squat. Like, I learned like, a lot yeah. of Chinese <laughs> while I was there, but, like, I still couldn't really read anything. At one point, I walked into a dumpling store. At the time, I didn't know it was a dumpling store. And I was like, all right, I got how much money? I had, I had 20 Kwai, as they call it at the time, 20 UN, which is actually, like, six bucks I think or something like that and I was like hmm that's his 18 so I just looked at the person I just pointed at the menu and I was like whatever that is <laughs> and she got it to me it was good you went full child status just uh I said that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so um she brought it out and I was like oh dumplings perfect then I found out later from a friend of mine who well, spoke both Chinese and English that all that store sold was dumplings <laughs> so I was like oh, yeah fine. you just you couldn't have gotten anything else I really, yeah right. they had different kinds but um, I think that going in to China I, I kind of would have which um, I kind of would have I, I don't know so like all of my friends got kind of culture shock that went with me yeah. I really didn't like I went in and I was like this is cool but I was so prepared for it to be so vastly different than what I'm used to and I had already been doing a lot of random stuff after I finished high school because I wanted to explore the world and do everything I could that it didn't really shock me anymore like I had grown accustomed to culture shock that I was like oh whatever I'm here now this yeah, is it's just something neat let's new, have fun weird. right <clears throat> and then I went to you know a couple other places and I, I was uh, in different countries for a while so then whenever I start like kind of coming back never got culture shock but i got one hell of a reverse culture shock i came home yeah. and i was like what am i doing with my life <laughs> like it was I, I didn't know what to do i didn't um, i had the same thing but i was in i was in a very low spot though so yeah, i was, was in a different that was a little bit yeah you came back and had your whole world ahead of you and yeah. i was like i have no money <laughs> right yeah, exactly for me i had no money as well but i was like oh man like i want to do all sorts of things and like my kind of life story is i wanted to be an accountant then i traveled a lot and i was like all right, look, accounting's cool. I like working with money, but I need to do something exhilarating. And our dad has been a paramedic for 30 years. So I was like, Pops, how do I do this EMT thing? And that's where I'm at now. And I wouldn't regret it for a second. Um, But I think 
one thing I kind of wish I, I don't ever have any regrets like I don't I live that's my motto it's just there's no regrets I don't everything that I've done has made me who I am today and I'm better for it but I guess one thing I would have wished I kind of knew coming home was like how hard it would be to like get accustomed to being home again I didn't yeah. really have my own place because a lot of family stuff just went down I didn't have my own car I borrowed my brother's car and it was a stick oh, shift, yeah. which I had never driven before so I had to oh, learn that mini Cooper shift I worked on a farm to make cash to help pay for my oh schooling. my gosh most southern thing ever yeah ye- yeehaw yeah um, but the thing is like I I made ends meet, you know, that's that's what I did. And I kind of wish that I would have known coming coming home, like, oh, hey, like... It's going to be rough. You kind of get ready. Like, it's going to be a bumpy road out, like, but you, you got this. You yeah. Know? And I kind of, I wish, going into school, I wish I would have... Yeah, known. what would you would have, what would, what would you wish you would have known going into EMT and paramedic school and stuff? EMT, I wish I would have known how important, like, anatomy and physiology is. And studied that, yeah. Because the rest of it, I'm gonna be honest, you learn it so quickly. You it's learn an it easy stuff. Field. You learn like it's so it's so simple. Like oh, what my my dad told me again. He's been in for thirty years. He was like, remember, air goes in and out, and blood goes round and round. Like doing <laughs> that, fix it. And I was like, yeah, dad. <laughs> um, but like, <clears throat> yeah, that's one thing right. I kind of wish that I would have known going in was just how important knowing how the body works and knowing how anatomy and physiology works and all that was because it's that's really important and i my initially i, I did not think i was going to pass emt school because my first test was the hardest one and it was on amp going into paramedic school i um i wish i wasn't scared of change uh i was very scared of leaving the company that i worked for or of moving around because i kind of got uncomfortable and i was making money again and I kind of, I, I didn't want to embrace change again. Like, I was like, no, I, I need to sit where I'm at because it's safe. And I kind of wish I was just more ready to go for it because, like, I got stuck where I was and they weren't giving me what I needed. And so then I went to paramedic school and I really didn't have as much training as I probably should have for being an EMT who's been on an ambulance for a year. So I, um, but, you know, here I am. I, I think I'm still doing still doing really good I just kind of wish that I would give yeah. myself more. I think I could no matter how good I'm doing now I think I still could have done better if I just wasn't you know you know afraid of like taking a step forward because it's kind of a, when you leave one company to go to another right there's this brief moment of like technically unemployed yeah it's kind of scary it's scary middle ground want to hit that naturally the moment I choose to hit that someone has problems with the employment and gets like demoted or something so yeah. i'm unemployed for almost a month right so naturally that's going to happen anyway but i just kind of wish i wasn't scared of it and i was just like got money saved up i'm ready let's go do what's important for me and i think that's something that over the past year i've learned a lot is like it's it's important for me to focus on me and that's okay to focus on me a little bit like yeah that, well, that's the same thing coming back from Canada. For me, that was like, again, I had mentioned before, was there's a point where it's like I, when we read that that thing, that that uh, little in, that inspirational picture, is oh, like yeah. make sure you take care of yourself because you can't pour yeah. from an empty cup kind of yeah. thing. So it's like, yeah. it's like there's a moment when you have to realize, look at yourself in the mirror and go, I, I need to help myself a little bit here because I'm... Right. I'm in a bad spot. <laughs> and it's important to that before you like look in the mirror and don't recognize yourself. Yeah. Because there comes a point when you kind of do. Or the, or you or you deny it. Right. No, that's the worst part. And so yeah, for me, I kind of like that's that's how I like I was really scared of like you know change and like what was kind of coming and I was like, but I realized where I'm at with these people, I mean, regardless of what they taught me and how good they have been to me, they are not giving me what I need. And I told them, yeah, don't give me what I need. I will be forced to go to a different company that will give me what I need. You hate to see it. And yeah, you just, you hate to see it. Yeah, I had to do it too, you know. <laughs> That's in the chat. <laughs> um, but like, when they didn't, I was like, okay, well, I'm a man of my word. I have to make good on my word. Like, I, so I, I put in my two weeks and everything and they, they all acted shocked. And I was like, don't, don't act shocked now. Like, <laughs> I told you guys, like, to keep me as a medic, you're going to have to help teach me because I'm a student you're gonna have to work with my school schedule yeah and they didn't and I was like all right peace out 
and it was it was still scary, but I realized like I, I woke up one morning going into work and I was like, these people are not caring about me as a person and as an employee. Why should I care about them? I need to do what's best for me. And once I realized that, I, I made the decision that day. Um, and I, I haven't regretted it. I think it's been better for, again, I work on my school schedule more. So it's been yeah. better for me. And, uh, That's good. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm going to change the gears a little bit, but right. at the same time, I'm going to keep it uh, just the way we had it before. I'm going to tell a brief little story about something, and I'm gonna, I, want, I want to ask you a question. Story time. Story time. <laughs> when I worked in Canada, I had... So, I, again, I worked at a coffee shop. Surprise, surprise. Um, and I met some amazing people working there in Canada that I just I didn't m- meet here in the States. It's just so different. Um, but... I had at least two or three people that like impacted me in like a real way yeah. when I lived there that were like just wise older people mm-hmm. that just like instilled knowledge into me and the one that always comes to mind is Mr. Rick. Mm-hmm. Mr. Rick was an adjunct professor at the college mm-hmm. of like the city I lived in and he was just he was just like like a warm personality yeah, in a yeah. cold, cold <laughs> climate. He was just like such a, and an, I just an, an awesome person to talk to. Was yeah. always like, was always uplifting me, and was just so positive, and was just like an all around, all around great person that uh, just was genuine and meant well, mm-hmm. and had like there were so many times that like. I don't think he realized, mm-hmm. but whenever he he spoke so much, like, just, like... Straight fire? Spit <laughs> straight fire at was, me. When I tell you, it was like, day. he was like, there's a point, like, I can't, I can't even remember verbatim what a lot of the stuff he said, mm-hmm. but, like, there was moments where he was like, it was just, it was what I needed in that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my question was going to be, like, did you ever have a, have you ever had a patient so far that has just like really hit you different Mm. that is like Mm. it made you really like look at your practice and look at what you do and go like wow like this is what i do this for because every time i would come in and rick was there and he was just like Mm -hmm. encouraging me as a leader and as just like a guy making coffee as a barista he was just like he, anytime I saw him, he was like, just made my day. Just right. I'll eat better. Just that a little bit better. A little yeah. bit better. Um, it's really kind of it's really kind of hard because yeah. On, on the one hand, I had a lot of people because because right now currently I work for a municipal EMS service, so we we just do nine one one calls. The last service I worked for was a local, well, not really local, it was relatively big, but still, it was a private EMS service that could also do interfacility hospital transfers. So at the private service, I ran a, a, another fairly high volume of calls that were mostly transfers, and I picked up people regularly. Um, and I always made sure that, you know, whether I'm on the ambulance responding to an emergency or I'm on the ambulance to take old, old Ricky or you know, whatever to their dialysis. You're in the job of people. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, you got in it for the um, taking old Ricky to the dialysis appointment or taking um, <laughs> someone who got in a car wreck to the hospital, you know. I, I'm... You know, I'm, I'm here as an EMT, that's what I'm going to do. And so all of my patients really loved me. And I loved them too, I thought it was really cool. Even the ones that were kind of complicated. <laughs> the stretcher didn't fit in their house. <laughs> there was like three of those. Um, but like, there's one guy that really kind of does stick out. And the funny thing is like, he actually like, he in like at legitimately on the clock while I'm coming to pick him up to take him to dialysis one day, he was like, we were chat- we had been chatting for, of course, at this point, you know, I, he, dialysis, in case you didn't know, is whenever you go to get your blood filtered three times a week when you don't have functioning kidneys. So three, three times a week, you pick this guy up. And with my schedule, I would end up picking him up most likely two times out of a given week. So at I, this point, you had like done this a handful of times with him. Yeah, at this point, I've worked with this guy a lot. And we've chatted about different things. And I mentioned that like right down the street from the house that he lives at is the, is the house that we own. Um, that we were doing repairs on because there was a flood a, a little while back. And oh, so dad's house, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, so, da, or, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. that, that old so, house, yeah. <clears throat> so, like, right down the street from 
his house was a house that, that I own. Um, and like, or that I, I'm like, I'm at a lot. I don't necessarily own, but I'm, I'm at a lot. And he was like, oh, like if you're, if you're ever down there, you should come by and just say, hey, like legitimately my patient invited me to come to his house. And Could say, you do that? Or is it like against the rules? I mean, <laughs> I gotta be honest. I don't know. Really? The thing is, I can't see a reason why it would be against the rules uh, necessarily, other than, you know, of course, like, I can't talk about patient information. Of course, I, yes. I can't share this Confidentiality. Or whatever. Yeah, so, but, like, if he invited me to his house, yeah. that's kind of different. Like, yeah, naturally, I can't just memorize someone's, you know, address and go there later. Like, if I did, yeah, that's like, creepy. If you were in a car, like, I can't just hop into your house. That's <laughs> probably super illegal. It's probably called stalking, too. Um, but this guy, like, I was like, if you're ever in town, f- feel free to come by and say hey. And I was like, we finished that. We, we after we finished that, we cleared up. We cleared up and like got everything. I was like, he he legitimately just invited me to his home. Like, and he was just so nice. And there was one time when like every time we would pick him up, he had a dog. It was super nice. And like he would always come and do it. And every time he like he was really like a wholesome guy. Um, and like he had stories because he was in the military at one point um and like we would always chat and every time i'd come in there he would always like talk high about me and my partner whoever my partner was because i had two major partners um and like he um he was always talking highly of us and being like you two are the ones that are always on time but he's like ethan i've never seen you late once in in your life and i was like <laughs> i try i was like i try yeah i haven't been late for work in like but a day in my life um, and uh, eventually, like he was like, this, like come this coming week, I have an appointment going, you know, uh, like an hour away to go to. There's a bigger hospital like an hour away, and I was like, oh okay, like that's good to hear. And they're trying to get you like fitted for something. Like yeah, it was like a bigger procedure they were doing. And I was like, that's awesome to hear. And he was like, yeah, is there a way that I can ask for you specifically though? And I was like, yeah, there is. You can request my unit and if I'm working that day it'll be me if I'm not working that day it's gonna be the other crew and they're pretty cool too I'll give them that they're all right (laughs) and like he was like that is the day you're working and it was and he was like I'm gonna request you specifically because you're never late and you're like my favorite and I was like oh wow (laughs) like yeah and then of course I picked him up and like I was hey, talking with him and his wife about because weren't you going like way you're going like what an hour or two away it was an hour and a half away yeah Yeah. so you had like a lot of time I've, I've told you where it was, but yeah, yeah we were course. going to like the bigger hospital essentially because he was a veteran and there's a bigger veterans hospital that's a while away. Yeah. And so essentially, they because all the higher funding things have to be done there for I don't know, the VA is confusing. I don't know. Yeah. The VA is confusing. The VA is so confusing for people who who are in yeah, the right. VA. I have some friends that were in the military <laughs> and they're like, yeah, the VA is confusing and they're literally working with it. So yeah, and that that was his thing. So, um, he like would always share a couple of things and was like he was super cool and like I said he always talked highly of us and it it was it was people like him who are legitimately grateful for what we do that um that were really cool that was another one that was also really nice and she was really chatty it had like a rare condition she worked for an ambulance service and then because of a rare condition had to stop um and like she was also super cool but I, I can't really say if there's like one patient that I've been like yep you're like this is why I do this right like I can't I can't tell you of like a particular time that I've like you know pulled someone from the clutches of death and been like yep this is what I do it for like I don't really have something like that yeah I've had a lot of things that have changed my life just by seeing you know I've seen people injured in certain ways I've seen some crap after only a year right and so it's like I have seen life-changing things, but, like, I don't think any of them stick out in such a way that, like, that like, I could, like, you know, tell a story about them, other than, like, the guy I just talked about, you know, a f- very few others. Yeah. Um, there was, I guess there was, like, one little thing with it, but, again, it was just, it was kind of neat, but it wasn't, like, you yeah. know, why I do it kind of the- thing, where, like, they... I walked in and again they, they loved me they, they thought we were great me and my partner they loved us when we picked her up yeah and so like we'd come in and they would legitimately invite us I guess they didn't know how our job works <laughs> um, because they would they legitimately would invite us to come down and, like eat with them before picking her up and taking her where she had to go and I was like yeah. that's how this works we have to take yeah, yeah. where she's going that's they offered it. to give me a haircut whenever I mentioned I needed a haircut like they were cool people um, 
and there was also people who were smoking weed across the street every time. And I knew they were. So always. every time I was just like, what's up, dudes? And yeah. I'm like, oh, what's up? <laughs> they were always so hot every time I picked them up. <laughs> um, yeah. That's crazy. I think oh, my yeah. coworkers have changed my life more than Man. My, uh, like my patients have. Because like, yeah. my coworkers have really even the ones that are like it, it's kind of like a weird kind of tough luck they were like they'll they'll pick on me all the time and then like i'll get a text and they'll be like bro you're gonna make a great pair but you know that right and i'm like aren't that yeah weren't like, that yeah and there's like yeah. really cool people and like at, at one point i was like i told someone like i had a bad day working with this one guy because he was just such a jerk and like they all my coworkers were like yeah he's a jerk you're gonna be great and you did awesome, and all, like they were like just talking me up and said talking about this guy was rude, and like that's just the way it is, and like um, it's just like my coworkers really were always like kind of like there for me, you know. And it was, it was something I hadn't really experienced in a different job before because I worked at a fast food restaurant, I traveled, came home, did EMT school, and then worked on an ambulance. So I, I've only worked two jobs essentially, uh, aside from working on a farm for cash to pay for yeah. school. And that was fast food restaurant and then straight to an ambulance. So like, it was something that was totally new to me to have a workplace that was like, with people that were so cool like that, you know? Mm -hmm. I, like I said before, there was like, I had never had, I think it, it just, it hit me different in Canada because of the way, because of the fact that I like was like establishing something for myself there like I had moved there I had no I had no previous ties there besides a few people yeah. but like I moved there worked at a job that I knew nobody I knew nobody at <laughs> and a lot of the customers and the people that came in there were like I had said before just genuine nice people that were like even to the point where like I had I didn't realize how much of a connection that I made on all these people until after I was like I needed to I needed to leave because my visa was up. I wasn't mm -hmm. staying there for very long, um, and they had like two or three of them that had like given me gifts and had yeah. like they had like given me. I still have like cards that they gave me, and like this one lady was like a, like she's like an old she's like the, like the grandma the sweet grandma lady that just like was just again another one of those personalities that just like always made you feel warm and fuzzy coffee every morning, like. I just and they would come in at the same time and right. they would sit down and all chat and same just have a coffee. good time and it was just like it was it was amazing and like so to be able to sit down and just like have these conversations where even though I like clocked out of work I would like sit down and have like hours right. long conversations with these people yeah. and this one lady um she had like she was like crying when I was leaving because it was like my, my last day and I wasn't going to see her again. And so she was like trying to get choked up. And I was like, Ugh. it was just, and I've never, I've never had that at a workplace. Yeah, right. I've never had that. At a, I've never done anything like that where like I've had, I've lo I left places and people got sad and like, cause I've worked like a, a lot of places for a long period of time. Yeah. But even though it was like this brief couple of years that I had spent it there, it was it was enough to make a lasting impression and it really changed me in a whole new way yeah that's kind of like for me like i have the same kind of sort of thing or like i but i don't have the same thing necessarily like that was the only thing that leaving leaving the company i was like all right i need to leave for me yeah but i was like man i'm gonna miss like all the people like i said they always uplifted me like i made friends yeah. that were like really cool there and then you also i i, I took for granted some of the stuff that I got like frustrated and pissed off about like mm -hmm. my the call my managers that I had there were very strict about specific stuff and in the moment it just kind of was like frustrating because mm -hmm. they were so OCD and like clean and like organized like to the point where it was also kind of like a detriment mm -hmm. but dude when I moved back here and it was just <laughs> not, not even no not even that it literally there was no such thing as organization. Mm -hmm. Just, it was everywhere. Yeah. Nonsense. Hysteria. Mm -hmm. So I walk in there and I was like, what is this? And they're like, what are you talking about? They're like, they're like, what is this? Like, what are you talking about? That's just the way it is. I'm like, uh, uh, not no, but hell no, it's not. not. No, it's not. <laughs> exactly. And I was like, <laughs> like, 
so and it's like moments like that where I looked back on yeah. it and I was like even though I was pissed off and got frustrated about those mm-hmm. sort of things I now miss that it was an important lesson yeah oh my gosh <laughs> and like yeah that's what I worked with one person who like the the general and, and the thing is I can say this because like everybody including my partner at the time knew that everyone said this about her she was very harsh and she knew it so anytime I tell someone oh I worked with this person on this unit they're always like you did that willingly <laughs> that's what they always would say like you wanted that and I was like yeah I knew she would be hard on me and then it was I had that distinct advantage where most of my like teachers uh, were extremely harsh on me and it was really annoying because I never felt like I was ever doing good enough but then I got into doing you know other things and going to paramedics yeah and I had already gotten very very good like starter things like yeah I'd already gotten the basics down right like I was I was on top of everything everyone loved it they were like wow like, where'd you do that and I was like I had a partner who was so strict about how everything was and how it was cleaned that now it's second nature for me to make yeah. sure everything is clean and everything has its place because then yeah. whenever crap hits the fan and I've got a patient that needs something now yeah everything is where it's supposed to be and everything has its place yeah period and I was like, <laughs> it's so annoying whenever every morning you open that drawer and you're like yep it's there and she's like, are you sure? And I'm like, I'm from brand certain it's there. Mm-hmm. But then whenever you need something, you're like, oh, heck, I know where it's at. Right? Like, yeah. it was kind of... Just to be able just to grab it and go. All right, yeah, exactly. And, like, making sure I've got everything, keeping on top of that kind of stuff. It was really important. So it felt, at the time, it was like, I'm pretty sure you just hate me. <laughs> but then <laughs> whenever I went to another, like, truck, another company, and it wasn't, like, I wasn't working with this person anymore, I had already had the like foundation of like everything has its place I want to know everything that I need to hit with it's the fan and all of my people have appreciated that and I've appreciated learned, appreciated learning that lesson um, yeah I uh, I feel really good like lesson to learn you know mm-hmm. before I decided to move on into like a, a higher stakes environment as it were I um had a very good foundation going in. Yep. Well, this has been fun, dude. Is there anything else you want to say before we uh, wrap this up and get to the end? Wash your dang hands. Wash your dang <laughs> Wash hands, dang man. Hand. Just keep them clean. If you're, if you're going to wear a mask at Walmart, at, at least wear it right. I went to Walmart today. 80% of those people were not wearing those masks correctly. Yeah. Or they weren't wearing the right masks. Or they didn't have a seat. Like, if you're going to wear a mask, at least wear it right. But just wash your tank hands. <laughs> That's all I ask. Right. So. Well, thanks for, uh, um, thanks for helping me, Sean, just to be able to talk this out and yeah. doing this podcast again, you know, even though we were not supposed to. I won't go into that again. Right, <laughs> but, <man>. um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, yeah, you know what they say, yeah. Uh, bird in the hand, sort of gift horse's mouth and, uh, it's, uh, what was the one that I said yesterday we went on a little bit of a tangent yesterday <laughs> and I we were mixing up idioms on purpose just for the hell of it yeah like uh, and I think we'll, that we'll burn that bridge when we cross it's one of my favorites yeah I think I mixed you have to break a couple eggs to make an omelet yeah. and uh, he who lives in a glass house shouldn't throw rocks. Yeah, he, he, if you lived in a glass house, can't make omelets or something like that. I, I think my, my, my idiom exactly was, if you live in a glass house, you cannot make omelets. My personal favorite one <laughs> was, um, when life gives you lemons, break a few eggs. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Um, is there okay? I have one last question before we actually wrap this up. I know I've already said this okay. twice or three times now. Is there a movie or a show of some kind that we are going to watch that you want to be on that episode so we can have it on the record in the future that if we were to do this, I want to have your opinion on it? I mean, you see, the thing is, when it comes to our friend Dylan, who is, is kind of doing this show, uh, supposed to be doing this show normally. Yes, we're calling you out, Dylan. We're yeah, we're calling you out, Dylan. Uh, um, so like, he had. It's a running joke that since I've known him, I've known him for probably reaching on ten years now. Um, long time. I've known him for a long time. Yeah. That essentially, he's always like, "Oh, hey, have you seen 
insert movie here and I've yes. been like why are you asking that question that's actually the the premise of this show was yeah. the fact that that running joke has been a thing between mm-hmm. the two of us Dylan yeah. and actually the three of us to be honest yeah. but. and so it was always a thing where he would be like you know, have you seen X and I would just tell him why are you asking that yeah. question you, you know it's a answer, no right? it was almost never that I had seen what he was talking about and they were all like classics and like you know there are things that like were just they're good like everybody seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail Alien vs. Predator right mm-hmm. like just well that's what I was saying so again I, we've already yeah that, mm-hmm. that's that's what this whole show is about yeah. but the thing is I was saying is there one that you want to also be uh, on the episode of what we talk yeah. about or where we actually watch it and you get a good idea for yeah. it well, well I mean well that being said that was, I was, all that was to say, yeah, like, that's the premise of this. But because that list is so big, I I couldn't tell you what you guys are gonna watch. That, like I have to like see, okay. right? Like I couldn't. I mean, there's there's a few things that yeah, like I would I wanna I wanna watch and I would like to have my you know opinion on it in there. But like I'm not really sure. Yeah, you know, one thing I'm working on that's been popular and again people are freaking out because I've never finished watching it is the Avatar: Last Airbender series. I never, yeah, I've never actually really watched that much of it. It was around growing up. Watched a couple episodes, but that was it. When I was sitting down, I was told I have to walk through all of it. And I'm really enjoying it, but I'm not even close to finish yet. Um, yeah. So. I'm well, then sure. we'll revisit that question. Mm-hmm. We'll revisit that question mm-hmm. soon. Sure. We'll figure it out. But, anyways, thanks again for joining us on this uh, very weird and different podcast. Mm-hmm. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Let me know if you like this kind of format as well, um, where I just kind of really deep dive and talk with people in my life and people around me and stuff like that because I think it's really fun and I really enjoy it. Um, you can reach out on Instagram at Ian Wolf, W-O-L-F-F-E, like it is in the show notes. Um, reach out, DM me, whatever. Um, and until next time, you know, as they say. Yeah, you know, you can't make an omelet without life giving you lemons. If you live in a glass house, you cannot, Dude, you cannot make omelets. It's that little, you cannot. <laughs>